This video will talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. This is done by just, just like adding and subtracting fractions. It's just a little more complicated because you're going to have some variables involved. But when you, let's think about this problem. How would we add this thing? If you remember, we need a lowest common denominator, and that's the smallest number or quantity that goes into both numbers or quantities, if we're talking about ex, um, rationals. And so we look at these numbers of 15 and 9, and they have 45 in common. So the least common denominator is going to be 45. And then remember that you just multiply to make both of those denominators 45. So to make this one 45, I would have to multiply by 3. 3 times 15 would be 45, but it has to be 3 over 3, a factor of 1, so I don't change the value of my fraction. And this one over here, we would multiply by 5, because 5 times 9 is 45, and it would actually be 5 over 5. So then when we multiply, we have 6 on the top of the first fraction and 45 on the bottom. And then 1 times 5, again we're going to multiply here and multiply down here, to get 5 over 45. And then we just have to know how many 45ths do we have. We have 6 plus 5 more, which would be 11 45ths. Now let's think about just least common denominators in practice. So we have 6 and we have 4. One way to do this is to just start listing all, all the multiples of 6. So 6 and then 12 and then 18. And then we could list the multiples of 4. And that would be 4 and 8 and 12. And now I have found the first number they have in common. So that will be the smallest thing they have in common. So the least common denominator here must be 12. Now when we look here, we have to consider the number and the letters. So 2 and 3 would be 2, 4, 6, and 6 I know is common with 3. So I'm going to realize that that would be my common factor here. If you need to, it would be 3, 6, oh there it is. And then with the variable, we have to realize that we have to build up the denominators, so that makes it have to be the largest exponent. So we have a 6 for the number, and we have x to the fourth, giving us 6x to the fourth for the least common denominator. What do we do when we've got expressions? Well, we just factor. So we have x plus 2, and then over here we would factor this one, and it would be x plus 2 and x minus 2. And I just need to know all the different factors so then I can make up, make the, my denominators look the same. So if I look at this, I have x plus 2. And when I go to the second fraction, I've already got x plus 2. And if I compare their exponents, so I could take the largest one, but they're the same, I don't need a second one. And then I need the x minus 2 because that's a different factor that I haven't listed yet. So that x plus 2, x minus 2 would be my least common denominator. Okay, one more. So we have to factor. Factors of negative 12 that will add up to negative 1. That would be 3 and 4 and to, with opposite signs. So we want a negative answer so it will be negative 4 and positive 3. And then over here we just have x plus 3. That is the denominator there. So the least common denominator, I've got x minus 4, I've got x plus 3, and when I go to my second fraction, I realize I've already listed that factor and they have the same exponent, so I have x minus 4, and that is a 3. x plus 3. When we add or subtract rational functions, the first thing we want to do is factor those numerators and denominators separately. And that way we can find the least common denominator. Then we'll multiply each fraction by that factor of 1. Remember at the very beginning we had a 5 over 5 and 3 over 3 or whatever it was. So we need this factor that looks like a fraction but the same thing in both parts of it. And that's made up of the missing parts of that fraction from the least common denominator. And then we're going to add or subtract the numerators only by combining like terms. 
And when you subtract, don't forget to distribute the negative and then reduce it if we have to. So when we did one earlier, we had x over 6 and x over 4, but we weren't adding. But we found out that the least common denominator was 12. Just like we did before, when we had numerical fractions, we need to multiply this one by 2 over 2. And we need to multiply the second fraction both times 3 over 3. And when we combine here and multiply, we're going to get 2 times x on the top and 2 times 6 on the bottom will be 12 plus and combine 3 by multiplying 3 times x is 3x and on the bottom 4 times 3 again will be 12 my denominators are the same so I get to add so I have 2x plus 3 more x's so I have 5x on the bottom and remember it said numerators only so I carry along the 12. I want to know how many 12ths I have. I have 5x 12ths. We factor. This denominator has a common factor of x, leaving me with x plus 4. And that denominator is already factored. So the least common denominator is going to be equal to this x and x plus 4 And I've already listed that x factor, so I don't need to list it again. So my least common denominator is x times x plus 4. So when I look at this fraction, it's 4 over x times x plus 4. It already has my least common denominator. So I just have to rewrite it in factored form. And then minus, and I have the x, but I don't have the x plus 4. So I'm going to have to multiply the x plus 4 over x plus 4. You can see there's my denominator, least common denominator, of x and x plus 4. But on the top, I have to distribute my 9. So 9 times x would be 9x, and 9 times 4 would be plus 36. And then here's the tricky part. We are just subtracting, and we are subtracting the whole numerator here. So if I were to write it out as one long fraction, it would be 4, and then distribute it here, it would be minus 9x, and distribute it here, it would be minus 36. Okay, and this is the one that everybody misses, over my x times x plus 4. And then I just have to simplify. I have two constants, so 4 minus 36 will give me a negative 32 and then minus my 9x and I would need to look and see if I could factor top to possibly reduce this fraction but negative 32 and negative 9x the only thing they have in common is negative 1 which won't reduce with the bottom so this is good alright here we go I think we did this one earlier too so this one was x minus 4 and x plus 3 and that makes the least common denominator x minus 4, the first factor that I see, and x plus 3, the next factor that I see. And in the second fraction, I've already listed that particular factor, and it has the same exponent on it. So we just have x minus 4, x plus 3. So once again, my first fraction actually has the right denominator in it. So I don't have to do anything to that fraction. That rational expression gets to stay. Minus... Now I have the x plus 3, but I'm missing the x minus 4. So we have to multiply by the missing factor of the least common denominator. And on the bottom, then, you can see that there's my x plus 3 and x minus 4. And it doesn't matter how you write those factors, because we can multiply in any order. So you look at those two denominators, and I put those factors in the different order, but they're the same thing. So now I just have to distribute my 2x to the x gives me 2x squared and to the negative 4 gives me minus 8x and then I remember about this negative having, has to go into that whole numerator so I have 5 minus 2x squared and then a negative times a negative remember is I'm even going to put it in a different color plus 
8x, and then that's all over my denominator of x plus 3x minus 4. And the only thing I have left to do then is combine my like terms, if there are any. And there aren't, so I have negative 2x squared, and then plus 8x, plus 5. I'm just going to write it in standard quadratic form so that I can possibly factor if I have to. And I want to see if it's factorable. So negative 2 times 5 would be negative 10. And the middle is 8. And I'm thinking of factors of negative 10 that would add up to 8. I only have 1 and 10, and they're opposite signs, so that won't be 8. Or 2 and 5 being opposite signs would give me 3. So this one cannot be reduced any further. And there's our answer. OK, our final one here then. x plus 2 is this denominator. And over here, I have x plus 2 and x minus 2. So the least common denominator is, you guessed it, x plus 2. I've already listed x plus 2, so I don't have to list it again. And then x minus 2, the first fraction. It has the x plus 2, but it doesn't have the x minus 2. So I have to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2. So distribute the 6 everywhere inside, and I get, in fact, I'm going to rewrite it over here. x minus 2 over x minus 2 is what I have to multiply by. And my fraction was 6 over x plus 2. And when I fix just this fraction, I get 6x minus 12 over that least common denominator. And then I'm going to add, and when I look at this fraction, I don't have, the least common denominator is my denominator, so I don't have to do anything to it. I just have x over x plus 2, x minus 2. And notice, once again, I wrote it in different order, but it doesn't matter. We just have to have them all listed down there. And combining like terms, I'm going to have to add those two x's. So 6x plus one more x will be 7x minus 12 on the top over x plus 2, x minus 2. And 7x minus 12, I'm looking to see if I can factor that at all, but I can't. They have nothing in common. So there is my final answer.